the first writer uh, which we are going to study today and uh, is Sir Thomas Mannering and the other one is John Skelton. Both of these writers have one thing in common and which is that they bridge the gap between uh, the medieval age and the Renaissance. Uh, the age of Chaucer uh, ended when Chaucer died. Uh, he died in 1400 and uh, uh, when he died there were a few writers like uh, John Lydgate and uh, John Gower, Langland and uh, Langland also died in the same year as Chaucer and uh, there was Wycliffe but he died before Chaucer. There was John, Man uh, uh, John Lydgate who was uh, who wrote much after Chaucer, and uh, he is considered one of the uh, one of, of the persons who is related to the age of Chaucer. And why we connect him to the age of Chaucer and not with Renaissance is the, uh, because he has more traits of the age of Chaucer rather than the age which was coming ahead, the Renaissance. So uh, when we great writers and uh, we categorize them in different ages. Uh, when some writers fall, some writers are uh, quite okay. There is no problem uh, in their date of death or date of birth. And uh, for example, uh, the Romantic Age starts with the publication of lyrical ballads and it ends with the death of uh, William Wordsworth. So uh, this is quite clear. But although uh, all the ages are not like this, for example, Elizabethan age ends when Queen Elizabeth I died. So uh, some ages are like this, but some ages are quite, uh, they, they need quite flexibility. And uh, in this flexibility, we place uh, Sir Thomas Mallory and John Skelton in the period between medieval age and Renaissance because they had both the traits. They had the traits of Renaissance and they had the traits of uh, medieval age or the age of Chaucer. And why it happens that uh, a person has traits of both ages because they uh, happen to be working in the age which is transitory. And when the age is transitory, then uh, transitory means that the age is changing. And when age is changing, then you have uh, a lot of things coming into it. Uh, for example, if we uh, look at the people who, uh, who were born in the 60s, they, uh, they were quite young. Uh, they were about uh, 40 years or in their 40s when the century turned and now they are alive now and they are uh, quite uh, well familiar with the gadgets which we are familiar with. For example, they know how to use the mobile phones and their laptops and, uh, and all that. But in 1960s, there was no mobile and no laptop and uh, they have the traits both of these ages. They have the traits of uh, they have the eating habits or uh, the uh, lifestyle habits like uh, uh, their ancestors like the people who lived in 1950s and they have uh, a technology added to them uh, for example they can choose computers and all that so this is how the transitory ages work and uh, Thomas Mallory and uh, uh, the other one is John Skelton Skelton it is not the skeleton uh, which means Dancha. it is uh, it was just the name and uh, uh, although the spellings are same, <clears throat> you know, the spellings are not same. Uh, Sir so Thomas uh, Manry was the uh, most important person uh, of the era because he wrote a book, La Morte de Arthur. La Morte de Arthur. It means the death of Arthur. Uh, Arthur. La Morte de Arthur. And if you remember, I told you about the mystical romances that were uh, very much uh, in vogue before Chaucer or during the time of Chaucer. Everyone was writing about King Arthur because King Arthur was a Christian uh, king and he, uh, the story of Holy Grail or uh, the quest of Grail and all these things, they were uh, much in vogue. And that's why uh, everyone was writing about King Arthur and all these were uh, quite mythological things. Uh, there was some sort of reality in them, but uh, most of these things were uh, imaginary and the stories of knights and, and all that. Uh, so what Thomas Ma uh, Mallory did, uh, you can pronounce both Thomas or Thomas. Uh, so what Thomas or Thomas uh, Mallory did 
he combined all the works that were related to Arthur or King Arthur or the myth of Arthur and he combined them in one uh, one book and uh, when uh, we say combine them uh, we do not mean that he combined each and every bit of the story because it was not possible at that time uh, because there was uh, no means of communication and no means of research and uh, he was not able to travel to all the places to gather the stories of uh, Arthur but he combined a, a fairly big number of stories which were the most common ones and uh, he uh, published it in a book and uh, he wrote them all these uh, works in English and this is uh, the important thing that he wrote it in English because the previous ones were in Norman language or they were in Anglo-Saxon language or they were uh, quite French or Latin or, or every other language but they were not written in English but uh, what Sir Thomas uh, Mallory did was that he uh, translated or he uh, combined all the stories of Arthur and the Knights and the Round Table and the Grail and everything and he made into an English version and it was like a compendium of all the Arthur's tales. So this is only one work which, is, uh, which he is known for and uh, I have given you a brief introduction of the work as well. So now we come to John Skelton and the most important thing about John Skelton is that he was the first poet laureate or he is surnamed as poet laureate of uh, England and uh, it is a title given by the Oxford and the Cambridge University. So uh, poet laureate. He is the first poet laureate of England. So uh, this is an important question and uh, you must uh, mention it uh, in your notes as well uh, or highlight it uh, in your notes. So he is the uh, poet. He, uh, he is a poet of his own kind. And uh, why he is a different poet or why he is a poet of his own kind because he was the one poet who combined the life of the court and the life of ordinary man. He was not the person who wrote only of the court, like Chaucer and uh, like all other, uh, others were. But he was, uh, he was connected to the court, but he was also connected to the low life, to the normal people, to the common people. And he wrote both, uh, about both of them. And his works are, uh, the first one of his works and uh, the best known of his work is The Bog of the Court. And it is from about, uh, the year 1498, I'm writing this, uh, of the code, about uh, 1498. And it was a work of satire. And it was not a satire like uh, Chaucer's, but uh, uh, it has satire in it, and it comments on the code of Henry the Seventh. Henry the Seventh comments because it, uh, he was the king, Henry the Seventh. Uh, because he was the king at that time and he uh, wrote about this. And uh, then uh, his most uh, outspoken word, uh, work in uh, satire is known as Flip Sparrow. And uh, it is an elegy, Flip Sparrow. And it is an elegy. Elegy is a poem which is written in uh, commemoration of a person who has lost his life or uh, who is very close to, uh, close to the poet or uh, you can say uh, the, close to the poet or close to the people uh, or the mind of the people. So these are the uh, few things which you must know. And one important thing is it is he wrote the only morality play which is known by the name of the author. Uh, there were morality plays and mystery plays, which I will uh, do in the second part of my lecture. And uh, uh, that what are the mystery plays and the morality plays. And uh, he is the one who wrote a mystery play and the name was Magnificence. And uh, he is the only author who, uh, repeat these lines, uh, which lines. Uh, I just said that uh, I will, uh, do the morality plays and uh, 
the mystery plays in the later part of the uh, lecture. And uh, for now, I am just telling you that uh, Magnificence is the morality play written by Skelton, John Skelton. Other morality plays, there are a number of morality plays of that time, but we don't know about the author of any one of these, partly because the authors were anonymous or they uh, didn't want their name to be published, and partly because there were companies, there were theatrical companies who were uh, putting the dramas and uh, that is why they were not, uh, there was no much focus given to the writer or to the originator of the idea. But the most important thing which you must remember is that he was given a title of Poet Laureate uh, by Oxford and Cambridge Universities and these were the two institutes at that time who were very, uh, very much popular because they entertained uh, all the all sort of uh, studies like uh, they taught you Latin and Greek and French and uh, all the languages and uh, uh, they were uh, they also taught the secular things as well as the religious things but the monasteries which we uh, which were the earlier mode of teaching or the earlier institutes of teaching they only focused on the religious sort of things they never uh, focused on secular things or secular studies. So uh, I have just told you about three or four things about uh, uh, this uh, John Skelton. And uh, he was the first person who was named the Poet Laureate. He was the one who was unique in that he combined the life of the court and the, and the life of the common people. Number three, he wrote uh, satire, which was uh, very much common, uh, sorry, which was very much popular in, the, uh, in those days and it was the vogue of the court, you must know this, and it comments on the uh, court of Henry. And uh, the last thing which I told you, that he wrote a morality play, and the name is Magnificent. So uh, there is nothing, I don't think that uh, uh, any examiner will ask about John Skelton, uh, because there are many more writers to go, and uh, there are many more ages which are much more important than this one, but you must know that uh, there were writers who were uh, between, in between the medieval age and the Renaissance and how the literature was moving on. And when uh, I come back from, the, from a short break, I will discuss uh, the uh, drama which was going on in the medieval age and then the political craze of the Renaissance. And uh, we have ample time. I, I think uh, I should come back by 6.10 or 6.12, something like this. Uh, but uh, keep in touch with the uh, group and uh, you will see the message there. Okay, we are on break now.